This is Dave with Logical IT Solutions. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Windows virtual machine on an ESXi host using the vSphere client software. Before we begin, you want to have your vSphere software open, connected to the host, and in the inventory view. Right click on your host and click New Virtual Machine. In most situations, you can use the typical configuration, but for this example, we will use the custom so we can dig into all of the options. Here is where you type the name of your virtual machine. This name is how you will identify your virtual machine in the vSphere software. This name does not have to match the Windows machine name, but I recommend keeping them the same to avoid confusion. The data store is the disk on the host in which your virtual machines are stored. Some hosts may have multiple data stores, so make sure you choose the correct one for your virtual machine. You will want to choose the latest version virtual machine available so you have access to all the latest features VMware has to offer. This is where we choose the operating system of the virtual machine we are going to install. It is very important that we choose the correct operating system so the virtual machine has all the proper virtual drivers. The wrong operating system could cause instability or crashing of the virtual machine. Our VM is 2008 server R2 64 bit. Here is where you choose the number of CPUs the virtual machine will have. The more CPUs you add, the more host CPU the virtual machine will be able to consume. You don't want to under CPU or over CPU your virtual machine, but this setting can easily be changed at any point. The memory allocation behaves similar to the CPU. The more memory you assign, the more of the host memory the VM will have access to. You definitely want to assign adequate memory to the VM. Underspecking the VM on memory will cause paging, and the added I.O. will slow down the entire host and all the VMs residing on it. Your host can have multiple network cards and be connected to multiple networks simultaneously. This is where we choose the number of network cards the VM has and what networks it can connect to. For this example, there is only one network card. This is where we choose the SCSI controller for the virtual machine. In most cases, you can leave it as default. It is, however, important to remember that if you are importing an existing virtual machine, the controller type you select must match the controller type configured on the virtual machine or the VM will not boot. When creating a brand new virtual machine, you will not have an existing disk, so you will want to create a new one here. Be sure to assign adequate disk space when you are creating your virtual disk. You will need to take into consideration space for your operating system, Windows updates, software, and data. This drive can be grown or shrunk later on, but it's much easier to size it correctly initially. Disk provisioning dictates how much space your virtual machine will utilize on your data store. Thick provisioning will grow your virtual disk to the size you specify immediately, taking that space from the data store while thin provisioning allows the virtual disk to remain as large as the files inside of it and allowing it to grow to the maximum size that you have allocated. I recommend using thin provisioning and monitoring your data store and VM usage over time. In most cases you can leave the advanced options as default. Click Finish to create your blank virtual machine. Select your virtual machine and click Edit Virtual Machine Settings.
Click on the CD drive. Leave the setting as client device if you will be loading the operating system from a drive on your local computer. Change the setting to host device if the CD will be inserted in the CD drive on the host. Click connect to power on and click OK. Make sure the operating system disk is installed on the proper drive before continuing. Right click your virtual machine and click power on. If the CD is in your local machine, click the CD icon above the summary tab and connect it to your local computer's CD drive now. Click the console tab. When you need to access the vSphere software again, or your local Windows, press Ctrl-Alt at the same time to release the mouse from the console. The operating system installation should begin. If for some reason the OS does not begin installation, you should verify that the CD is a bootable one, it is inserted in the proper drive, and that the client CD drive is connected if your CD is local. Install the operating system using all the options that you would like configured. Create the operating system partition the same as if it were a virtual disk. Once the operating system installation is complete, be sure to activate Windows and install your VMware tools. You can check out our video on how to install VMware tools if you aren't sure how to do this. I recommend taking a snapshot of your virtual machine if you want the ability to revert this to a fresh state at any time. Your new virtual machine is configured and ready for use. Once again, this is Dave with Logical IT Solutions. Thanks for watching our tutorial. Please check out some of our other awesome videos and check out our website at www.logicalits.net.